Real quick, there's a Black Friday sale over on wolfdenapparel.com where you can get a shirt like this that glows in the dark for 20% off. You can get a hoodie for 20% off. You can also get Nintendo stuff over there. And there's a new hoodie. That one is a pre-sale and that one's 60 bucks. So check that out while everything lasts at the link in the description below. Nintendo knew what they were getting into with the release of the Switch. Even back in 2017, it couldn't hold a candle to the PS4 or baseline Xbox One. Now, the Switch is in its fifth year, and it's starting to show its age. I mean, it's always been a low-powered king, but it never really mattered. Nintendo's own games don't really need the latest technology and graphical fidelity, and any third parties that wanted their games on the Switch would kind of just figure it out. And a lot of times there were some impressive results and other times there were complete duds. In 2022, the middle of the fifth year of the Switch's life cycle, the Switch is underpowered. I don't think that's really a debate. I think we're all pretty much in agreement on that. It's basically a glorified Android tablet that's five years old. The Switch also has some amazing games, despite the hardware limitations. Besides, there's more to what makes a game fun than just graphics. And I thought this was a universal truth. I thought this was well understood by anybody with even a slight interest in video games. That was until Pokemon. Hey, boys. Hey. Oh, hello. Hey. Hey, you Glad to see this town as well. My camera isn't keeping up with the guy. <laughs> Yeah, I yeah, can see that. yeah, it'll do that. It'll do what? It, it does that. It does that. <laughs> this game is inexcusably and undeniably broken. The performance is so poor that I can't imagine somebody looking at this and saying, I don't know what you're talking about. Mine runs just fine. But believe it or not, that's exactly what's happening right now. But that's not all. There's discourse online about whether or not this is Game Freak's fault, the developer of Pokemon, or the hardware limitations of the Switch. I don't see how that could be a debate when we have games like this, and this, and this, and this, and this. So yeah, if developers can pull that off, then obviously it's the developer's fault. Problem solved, case closed, we're done here. And I thought that was a universal truth. And I thought that was pretty much well understood by everybody who even had a slight interest in video games until I saw this TikTok. This is footage of Pokemon Scarlet and Violet running on the PC Ryu Jinx emulator. And as you can see, it runs fine. It runs at a steady 30 frames per second, even when there's a bunch of Pokemon on screen at once, stuff that would normally cause Pokemon Scarlet and Violet to slow down, it runs just fine. And so I ask you, if this is the performance we get running Pokemon Scarlet and Violet on a PC, without altering the code whatsoever, and we get worse performance when we run it on Switch hardware, maybe the problem is the Switch's outdated hardware. Essentially, he shows the game running on a low-powered PC, and it seems to be running just fine. No glitches. So, does this mean that it's actually the Switch's fault? Does this mean that Pokemon Scarlet and Violet would be fixed if it ran on more powerful hardware? Absolutely the f not. This video is sponsored by Satisfy. Oh, hey, it's Bob Wolf from the Wolf Den here. Did you miss me? Today I'm here to talk to you about Satisfy, the best gaming grips you can get for your Nintendo Switch. We got Diablo Red, we got Piglish Pink, we got the old Tropical Edition Zen Grip Pro, and we got the Switch Lite one, all different types of colors, all different shapes and sizes you can get, all LED, and regular Nintendo Switch. Every girlfriend I've ever had has, has cheated on me. I got big manly hands and they're very sweaty and slippery. And on a regular Nintendo Switch, look at how small these Joy-Cons are. Look at how tiny this is. It's not good for a big man hand. But if you got a grip, especially a nice Diablo red one, wow, look at it, I can hold it, I can touch that right thumbstick perfectly. And right now there's a sale on every single thing over on Satisfy.com, all the way up to 50% off on stuff with their Black November sale. Ooh, you know, black like the Friday. 
They got switch grips, they got bundles, they got thumbsticks, they got dog carriers. No, no dog carriers? Okay, then how did I get this? There's also free shipping on all orders site-wide through all of Black November, you know, like the Friday. And we got two brand new colors. We got Diablo Red for the manly grizzled men and Pinkalicious Pink for the ladies. Here you go. Oh my God, cute. Please don't shoot. And a little something special for you at home. 5% off using the code WOLFDEN. How can we do better than that? Tell me. Tell me right now. Oh. Me? Yeah. <laughs> you got nothing. You got nothing, do you? <laughs> Check it out right now. Click the link in the description below. Get up to 50% off site-wide and free shipping for the whole month of November. And if you use code WOLFDEN, you will get 5% off. Would you stop breathing? I can hear you. Wait, wait, for the rest Shut up! I'm not usually one who cares about frame rate, especially on a first party console game. I usually don't care if the game runs at 60 or 30 frames per second, as long as the game is fun. And as long as that frame rate doesn't vary wildly or dip down to the point where it becomes a problem with the gameplay. With the clip, the clip, oh, yeah, the clip, it's getting really oh, bad. It's getting really bad. <laughs> Oh, no oh my god, oh my god. Unfortunately, the frame rate dips are very, very bad in this game. And that is usually a performance issue. So give yourself a more powerful machine and sure, there should be less frame rate issues. A mid-spec PC is going to be exponentially better than an Android tablet. So yeah, it would make sense for the game to perform better running on a mid-spec PC through an emulator than it would on an Android tablet. Here is Pokemon running on a Steam Deck though. And it's not running that much better. Granted, the Ryujinx emulator isn't well optimized yet for the Steam Deck, but still you'd think the Steam Deck's extra power should be able to pick up the slack. Optimization is the key word here. You'd think that a game that was specifically made for the Switch and no other console would be perfectly optimized for the Switch, right? So why are other platforms even being brought up in the conversation? This isn't a PC game, so it shouldn't matter how it runs on a PC, no matter what the spec is. This is a Switch game, and the developers knew it was only gonna be on the Switch from the very beginning of development. Unless this is a Switch Pro game. We're not going there. So sure, if you play this game on a beefier machine, it probably won't lag as much. But it's not like this is a graphically impressive game or anything. It's actually flat out ugly. What a cool environment. It's just fucking, looks like a, looks like sh this, this, this looks like Shadows of the Empire for the N64. <laughs> Look at all these boring environments with nothing in them or garbage textures, garbage shadows. At what point can we stop calling this a technical issue? Nintendo is usually really good at stylizing their games, so even if hardware limitations are an issue, they can mask it with some fancy art tricks. Here's an example of a game that's kind of like Pokemon that came out 11 years ago. What is their excuse? Also, it's impossible for this game to run without bugs because bugs are baked into the game. Did you know that if you play this game with a controller and you press up on the stick to move the character forward and then you press up on the attached Joy-Con on the Switch, the character moves twice as fast. Do you mean to tell me this was an intended feature? Or how about the big characters? Or the glitching through the floor? You mean to tell me these would be fixed on beefier hardware? Game Freak did not finish this game. And that's why it's broken, and that's why it's ugly, and that's why it's poorly optimized. And sure, you can play this on PC through an emulator if you really want to, but the game will still be broken, the game will still be ugly, and the extra hardware on the PC will be picking up slack unnecessarily, so the game will still be poorly optimized. I've been completely disenfranchised by Pokemon. I thought I was a fan all the way up until the Sword and Shield DLC. I played through all that whole game and I thought to myself at the very end, did I really have fun? I was one of those guys defending the ugly trees, remember that? I thought to myself, it's a Pokemon game, who cares if it's ugly? It's gonna be fun, right? 
Was it though? Pokemon games have felt like they've been stuck about three generations in the past for forever now. The games are played almost entirely within menus. So why are the menus so bad? Why in God's name is the start button the bike button? How many times do I have to mash A before my controller breaks? I've had a lot of issues with the latest Pokemon games, so much so that it becomes very hard to articulate. It's a lot of little things that add up. And it sounds like you're just whining when there's one or two, but when there's like 10 or 20, it becomes a major problem. So this time around, I decided to make a list while I was playing it. I'm not gonna go through the whole list here. I went through it in great detail over on the Nintendo podcast, which was posted today. So if you want an even longer Pokemon discussion, we'll do that over there. Despite everything I just said, despite spending almost 10 minutes crapping all over all of the performance issues of the game, despite hating all of the most recent Pokemon games, I actually kind of liked this new one. I even added a pros section to my list. It reminds me a lot of Cyberpunk. When that game came out, everybody was saying, buried under all of these technical issues is a good game. I didn't see that, I would have never liked that game. But that's exactly how I feel about Pokemon. They fixed so much of what I hated about the latest Pokemon games. Yeah, there's a lot of dialogue, but enable turbo on a controller and you breeze through the dialogue. There's not even much lag between dialogue or choices in combat menus. It just flies. Throwing a Pokeball is just a button in battle. Party leveling is streamlined. No need to sit through boring animations after a battle is over. No random encounters. And you could just jump right into a random Pokemon battle. There's no weird cutscene or anything. There's so much that's streamlined. It's just a shame that technical problems mar the experience. Camera issues, pop in, drop through, and the all important frame rate. I actually don't even hate the multiplayer. There's not much to do with your friends, but just being in the same world is a neat feature. Unfortunately, it makes the technical problems exponentially worse when you're playing together. There's no excuse for any of this. Pokemon is the highest grossing media franchise in the world. It's bigger than Star Wars. It's bigger than Marvel. It's bigger than Winnie the Pooh. How is that number three on the list? The problem is Game Freak either didn't really care or they were under an insane time crunch, which I think is probably more realistic. There's a new Pokemon game every single year, and it's pretty much required in order to keep the machine moving. They need new Pokemon to create new characters for stuffed animals and t-shirts and the anime. I'm sure whatever powers that be, whether it be the execs at the Pokemon company or Game Freak itself, impose this tight deadline. Or maybe they just didn't care that the game would be released in this broken state because they knew it would sell a lot anyway. This game smashed sales records coming up right above Sun and Moon, making this the highest number ever for global and domestic sales in the first three days after the release of software for all Nintendo game consoles, including the Switch. That is insane, this just happened. So no, they have no reason to change their ways. I'm extremely happy that they fixed some of my gripes with the latest Pokemon games. I thought they were kind of too big to care about those little issues. I just hope they don't become complacent in this way now. I hope they learn from this and give themselves time to make a truly great Pokemon game next time. I'm not looking for like a big, polished, Breath of the Wild style Pokemon game. I just want the game to run good. If this game ran at even just a solid 30 frames per second, I might give it like an eight or nine out of 10, but only that. I, I give it some points off for having a Pokemon that's just a cum. So what do you guys think about Pokemon Scarlet and Violets? Do you think its issues are the Switch's fault or Game Freak's fault or a little bit of column A, a little bit of column B? Probably a little bit of both, but it skews more one way in my opinion. You can leave it in the comments below. You can at me on Twitter or any and all of this other social media garbage. Don't forget to check out our sponsor, Satisfy, in the link in the description below. They're having a Black November sale. And also the merch over on wolfdenapparel.com. And there's some Nintendo stuff over there. Having a Black Friday sale there too. 
Also, I've been streaming more on twitch.tv slash Wolfden. I'm trying to get through Pokemon as best I can. It's a, it's a little bit of a slog sometimes, but I'm having at least a little bit of fun. But of course, the most important thing that you can do to help support this channel is subscribe right here, turn on notifications so you know when every single video goes live or share this video with a friend, a friend who maybe you had this very same argument with. Thank you very much. Have yourself a very good week. Get the game if you want it and you like Pokemon, you'll probably enjoy it at least a little bit.